champion. Kenny Carter and Les Collins of England and Dennis Sigalas of America all on five. Hans Nielsen from Denmark on four. England's Peter Collins on three. And Sweden's Jan Andersen on two. Also on two points, Phil Crump of Australia, Dave Jessup, England, Kai Nimi, Finland, Ollie Olsen and Bo Peterson of Denmark. Two riders on one point, Eric Gunderson of Denmark and Larry Ross of New Zealand. And England's Andy Graham, yet to score. So each rider still with three more rides. And our commentator in Vetlander now is Dave Lanning. Heat nine, there is the lineup. Andy Graham, no score. Dave Jessup looking for points in blue. Two points only. Hans Nielsen, four points. Peter Collins on the outside with three. Heat number nine. And it looks as though Jessup has made the start this time. Although Graham's got there first. And Collins has come swooping through in the most magnificent piece of cornering. And bought a hole through. And Jessup's gone through it. And so too has Nielsen. And that was action with a very, very large A around the first corner. Jessup leads it. Second place, Peter Collins. Nielsen third, losing his helmet colour. Trying to bore a hole right through. Peter Collins doesn't succeed. And Andy Graham, who really flourished briefly, is really finding the place a bit hard. And Jessup's in front. And they're all steaming up behind him. And Nielsen is moved under Collins. And Collins is almost colliding with Graham back as Danny Graham goes through and Peter Collins who came storming through on the first two corners is now trailing and it's Nielsen hard after Jessup looking over his inside shoulder Collins moving back into third place with Graham battling for his world championship existence a really classic battle and what a race this has been Jessup in front Nielsen still second Andy Graham's going to open his account at the expense of Peter Collins and on the line Jeff Jessup Nielsen holds on from Graham. That really was perhaps the most enterprising and exciting race of the evening thus far. The start of Heat 9 again. Uh, watch the outside for Peter Collins, who doesn't make the start and really has the most bionic swoop down the inside. You can see Jessup and Nielsen, and on the inside, Andy Graham get away. And Graham just has the drop on the first corner. And watch for Peter Collins, who swings back inside here as they all go storming past the corner. Collins goes from last right the way up to first here. And as they level out, Andy Graham has just got the drive down the back straight. And as Collins goes past him there, it leaves a hole for Dave Jessup to move through as well. Well, there we have two of the starters in Heat 11. On the inside, Dennis Segalos in red and Kenny Carter in white. And both of these riders know that they could clinch a place and a ticket to California in Heat 11. They reckon that seven points is the cut. Both Segalos and Carter have five points, but they have no easy passage here in Heat 11 because Kai Nimi, the Finn, reviving after a sluggish start, has two points knows he needs points to get back in the reckoning for one of the 11 places in Los Angeles and so too does Ollie Olsen just coming into the picture who had a disastrous opening ride but a much more uh, typically looking Olsen ride in his second outing with a fine second place he has two points so there is Tagalot five points next to him Nimai Blue two points grid three will have Kenny Carter England five points and on the outside the Great Dane a legend in his own lifetime, Ole Olsen with two points. Such prestige, such a coveted achievement to make a Los Angeles World Final. Here we go again, Heat 11. And it is Sigalos on the inside, and Carter swoops across from grid three. Carter leads in second place, Sigalos. Third is Olsen at the back, it is Nimi and Kenny Carter. The crown prince of English Speedway really waving the Union Jack as he drifts out wide and left the hole for Tagalos there. Well, Carter won't be happy with that. That really was a mistake. And now he's battling back, but Tagalos has gone through. And Carter, who looks like being a bonnie flag waver, is battling back on the inside now. And we have a rare battle, and Carter will give nothing away. He swims through. He may have just been too wide, and he's left another hole for Tagalos. And this really is a royal battle. Sigalos now in front, Carter is second, Olsen is third, and the American is stretching. Well, these two, we recall, had a ding-dong in Boyens in the Intercontinental Final of the World Team Cup when Carter swept past Sigalos, rushed to the side, 
but the Californian is gaining his revenge here in no mean fashion. He is going to win it. He must have qualified now. So too much Carter. Third with Olsen. He'll still have to fight. And Kainimi at the back. His hopes looking very, very forlorn. There's Sigalos. Tall, lanky. Very fast starter and a battler. We've seen he really has learned to come from the back and a very fair example of it there in heat 11. Heat number 12 and something really has to give here because we had two unbeaten riders. Kelly Moran there, he'll be in the red helmet colour on six points. And Bruce Pannell is American skipper in white. There he is just allowing the clutch to cool. He'll be in grid three unbeaten and just to spice the brew Les Collins from England has only dropped one point. He's on five points, so he has a very big say still in this intercontinental final. In the blue helmet colour, Bo Peterson has only two points, and this must be a daunting race for him to face at this stage of such an important meeting. Inside Moran, six points. Next to him, Bo Peterson, Denmark, two. Grid three, Bruce Pennell, who's looked at his bionic best. A strolling player he's been so far in front. Grid three, and on the outside, Les Collins, who's battled and fought for five points. Here we go, Heat 12, the Intercontinental Championship could be won and lost here. Oh, Pennell was left, I think. Pennell has been left at the start, and Moran's got away. Pennell's at the back as Collins comes around the board. And it's Peterson who shows, and that is a major surprise. We all forgot about him, and here comes uh, Les Collins. And Les Collins is riding his hard head around the board. And I think he's got the drop of Peterson, and that's a superb lap from Les Collins. And Collins is in front, and Moran is trying to find a hole up the inside of Peterson. And Pennell is way in the back, but Pennell is really fighting and swinging out where the dirt is. We know how good he can be from the back. It is terribly tight in there. He's 12. This is not far short of a classic. Collins leads it. Still second place. It is Peterson, and Peterson closing as Pennell moves through on the outside of Kelly Moran. This is going to open this Intercontinental Championship final wide open into the last lap. Still Collins. And Liz Collins really has ridden the race of his career. And it is awfully tight for the odd points. You can see Peterson really has been a strong merchant here. There is the battle. How is it going to finish? It is first Collins, Peterson held on, Pennell just got up, and Kelly Moran was in last position. That's the way it looked as they went over the line, and that is a race they'll be talking about for a long while. Heat 12 really did change the leaderboard. We can see all of the riders have now finished three races, and the new co-leaders, Les Collins of England and Dennis Tagalos of America, on eight points apiece. Bruce Pennell and Kenny Carter in level third position on seven each. Kelly Moran and Hans Nielsen on six apiece. Now, all of those should really now consider themselves safe for a place in California. After that, the battle really gets interesting. We've got Phil Crump and Dave Jessup on five points each. Bo Peterson all on his own on four. And then a real scrap developing for the remaining place between Jan Anderson, Peter Collins, Eric Gunderson and Oli Olsen, all with three each. Heat 13, Les Collins, joint leader on the inside with eight points. Phil Crump, Australia, still in battling away for a qualification place. He has five points. There is Collins. Next to him, Crump. Grid three has Olsen on the outside hand. Nielsen on six points. And Collins it is who shows first into the corner. Les Collins leads it for England in second place. It is Crump. Third is Olsen, although Nielsen has come bursting through from last to second. And Oli Olsen is at the back. And it could be the end of the World Championship for this year and maybe forever for the great day. The man who has done so much for Danish Speedway trailing and Les Collins from Leicester just across the Midlands from Olsen in Coventry. And Les Collins has really emerged as well, not really a shot packet because we knew this young man is a rider of class and of style, of thoroughbred pedigree, former British League riders champion. That, of course, was back in 1980. He's never really seen him show his true paces at this level. And he is going to go clear into the lead here. And Olsen is making it a bailing bid on Phil Crump's back wheel. Second place, Nielsen. Here is the leader. And Olsen has moved up on the inside of Crump. There is a the battle for the last point in heat. Number 13. And Olsen's bid just comes too late. A win for Collins. Second. 
was Nielsen. Third just holding on was Crump. Here is Collins. Well on his way to California and maybe even this intercontinental title. And Oli Olsen, we fear now, well, it's the end of the World Championship Road, surely for the Great Dane. Anderson then coming into the inside grid in heat 14. He has three points. Next to him, Kelly Moran will be in blue and he has six points. There is the lineup. Dennis Segalos, joint leader uh, after three rides each with Les Collins. Knows the win will take him up level with Collins. And on the outside, the elder Collins, that's Peter Collins, who after a promising start only has three points and will be in there scrapping. There is Segalos. That looks stylish. On the outside, Peter Collins and PC needs a bit of the old uh, Cheshire magic if he is to squeeze through to Los Angeles. Only three points so far. All of these riders with targets here in Heat 14 inside Anderson. The spinning wheel of Sigalos just allowing the clutch to cool down. And it's pretty sweltering out there temperature-wise. And it's boiling up here on track as well. Heat 14. Like Anderson has made the start he was looking for. Anderson in front. Second place, Kelly Moran. Here comes Peter Collins around the outside of Moran. has gone by. Anderson has only stood still. Absolutely tremendous acceleration from the American. And Anderson's in trouble as Collins now attacks him around the outside. And Segalos is still in touch as well. Peter Collins battling, battling around the outside. Can he find the drive? No, he can. He's been dropped. And Segalos has moved inside Anderson in exactly the place where his compatriot Moran went through. And for all his battling at the back, Peter Collins is being dropped. And the Americans really have shown just how to nip through at precisely the right moment. And they've shown all their ability and all their style and their courage indeed, because they have both come from the back around here in front. So Garlos is in second place. They're into the last lap for third place. Might not be enough for Anderson. And Peter Collins, for all his fighting heart, looks like he's going to get nothing at all from heat 14. It really is America's night, with the exception of Les Collins. They have reign supreme. Moran goes over the line on his back wheel. Second is Chiganoff. Third is Anderson. Last, for all the effort, was Peter Collins. And Kelly Moran is through to the world final in his home town, Los Angeles. And that's his dream. So too is Chiganoff. And there's a couple of happy Californians, because they can really say, California, here I come. So they've all got one ride left, and here is the leaderboard. In front, Les Collins, gloriously for England on 11 points. Dennis Segalos is second with 10. Kenny Carter on 9. Kelly Moran on 9. And Nielsen on 8. Dave Jessup and Bruce Pennell also on 8 points. Now they've surely all definitely qualified. Phil Crump on 6 points is still dithering, but should go through. Kainimi has 5 points. Then we have Bo Peterson and Jan Anderson on four, and they're still under some pressure from Eric Gunderson and Peter Collins on three points each. So still a lot of question marks here in Betlander as we approach the last stages of this 1982 Intercontinental Final. Segalos, there he is. Well, now he has ten points, and he needs a win, and if he wins, it means that Les Collins, who's a point clear, will have to win his last ride to take this intercontinental title. So Segalos will be going for the chequered flag. Larry Ross is in white in grid three with two points, to all intents and purposes, out of the World Championship. Panel on the outside will go to Los Angeles anyway. It will be interesting. Our minds drift provocatively back to White City when at this stage, Panel and Segalos also met with two other Americans and Panel controversially uh, Took little interest in the race to allow Sigalos to win. Now, it really would serve Sigalos' purposes if Bruce Pennell were to help him here. I wonder if he dare. It really is uh, the most explosive, potentially explosive situation. Here we go. He's 17. Nielsen, Sigalos, Ross, Pennell on the outside. And Sigalos has made the jump. Sigalos hits the corner in front. Going round him hard is Larry Ross. And Ross is leading it. In second place, it is Nielsen. And where is Pennell? Pennell's in third place, and Segalos is at the back. And, uh, well, again, we have a surprise 
with Larry Ross, who he's uh, not reckoned on one little bit. He's in front, and uh, it could well be, although we'll have to get the slide rules out, five points. Larry Ross might just sneak a place if uh, his competitors do silly things. And it is a surprise to see the Americans, who dominated proceedings early on, struggling so far at the back. Ross is going to uh, take this one against all the odds. Second place, Nielsen. Panel third to Garlos, who needed a win to put pressure on Les Collins. To so know he's going to gain nothing at all from heat number 17. So Ross wins it. And he can just sweat now. Over the line he goes. Second place, Nielsen. Third was Panel. Last was to Garlos. It's looking good now for Les Collins because to Garlos. His chief rival picked up nothing at all. Larry Ross moves on to five points, and we can but ponder if that's going to be enough for him for a last gas effort at a world final place. Mike well, let's watch that start again. And as they go, you can see it looks like Sigalos from grid two and Nielsen from the inside. But then across from the outside comes Panel and Larry Ross rides a pretty brave first corner in the white helmet colour because he squeezes through the gap, Nielsen moves through on the line and Panel comes around the outside of Sigalos and not for the first time tonight, we've seen a rider go from first to last in one corner. He's 18 and this could be a rare can of worms we're opening up here because three of the riders have everything to go for. We have got on the inside Kai Nimi with five points needing well, a second anyway to have a chance of qualification. Jan Anderson from Sweden, only four points. He really needs a win. And we've got Les Collins in white, who now just needs a second place to take the intercontinental crown. And on the outside, Dave Jessup assured of qualification on eight points. So Les Collins, a winner of second, will give him the intercontinental title. It will be a surprise, but thoroughly warranted. And both Nimi on the inside and Anderson, here is Les Collins has really raised the British crowd here in Betlanda. There is Jessup. David with really nothing much to race for here. He knows he's on the plane to California and he knows there's going to be some pretty tough action on the inside of him on that first corner. He's 18. And it is Anderson who's got away and so too has Collins. Collins on the outside. Anderson leads it. Second place, Collins. Third is Nimi. And Nimi bursting down on the inside of Les Collins. And Les Collins has just got to hang on in there in second place. And he's round the outside. And he has been pushed out into third place. Anderson in front. Les Collins around the outside of Kai Nimi. And Collins has not got up. And the two riders who are desperate for qualification points are showing a clean pair of heels to the rider who might well win this title. Anderson in front, at last he's given the Swedish crowd something to cheer about. And Collins now in a little bit of pressure and trouble from Dave Jessup. It has been a meeting of fluctuating fortunes and a few surprises. And not uh, inconsiderable upset into the last lap. Anderson might well just steal one of those qualification places here in Heat 18. And Dave Jessup moves inside Les Collins. And it really is all happening here. And the rivals again will have to come out. As Anderson goes over the line, he wins it. Second place, Nimi. Collins just got up by that entire width for third place. And that could be a vital third place point for him. The Swedish crowd rise to Anderson, who seems to have found his touch a mite late, but uh, in the nick of time. We come on to Heat 19. Les Collins has finished his rise on 12 points. We've got two riders in Heat 19 who, with a win here, can move up to tie with him for a runoff for the Intercontinental title. Kenny Carter on the inside needs a win. He has nine points, and a win will take him into a runoff with Collins for the championship. Grid two, Phil Crump has six points. There's Carter needing a win. Now, Phil Crump has six, so really wants one point at least to be sure of qualification. Then we have Kelly Moran. You know, he has nine points, so a win here will take him into a runoff with Les Collins for the championship. And on the outside, Andy Graham has three points. And, well, I suppose it's still conceivable technically with a win here. He might just squeeze in, but it's very doubtful. Heat 19, Carter and Moran looking for wins. Trump looking for points.
Carter from the inside, who's got away, Carter hits the corner in front, in second place, coming hard round the board, it is young Graham, and Graham has got the, the legs of both Moran and Phil Crump, as Kelly Moran tries the high wide outside run as well, and they're all tightening up, it is Graham who's moved up front now, Graham in front, Carter in second, in third place is Crump, and the English lads, well, they are showing them the way home here again, it hasn't been a bad night for the English line, because Andy Graham, again the outsider who we didn't reckon, has moved up front. Carter sitting nice and tight behind him. And this will mean that an Englishman will win the Intercontinental Crown. That will be Les Collins. But at the moment, all the conjecture is how many can we get through to Los Angeles? Because Carter clearly is not really challenging Graham. And Andy Graham, the British champion, may have left his uh, big effort a bit late. This win, if he goes around the last two corners, will take him on to six points. So Graham wins it. Second place, Carter. Third was Trump. Moran was at the back. So Les Collins it is, who is the Intercontinental Champion. And Andy Graham here, the winner of Heat 19, must just sit and sweat and get the computer out to see if his last ditch effort was enough. We now have 10 qualifiers, certainly, and we have Andy Graham on six points at the moment as the 11th qualifier. But all of these riders in Heat 20 can go through. We have got Bo Peterson there in yellow and black. Now, he has four points. If he wins it, he takes the last qualification place. If he doesn't win it, any of the other three riders inside him, Eric Gunderson, Ole Olsen, or Peter Collins, can get three points here, which moves them into a level situation with Andy Graham. We would have a runoff for the last place. And of course, if Peterson finishes second, he would go in that runoff too. So, once again, we have got uh, all the action and all the controversy right to the last uh, gasp. And there's going to be no team racing here unless Goodison and Olsen get together. And Peterson, of course, the three Danes, but I don't think they will. And we look to Peter Collins because he still might snatch it. He's 20 with everything to go for. Oh, and Peterson almost jumped the start and lucky again to escape a safe exclusion. He's so impatient to get on with it. And away they go as Peterson has been left on the inside. It is Goodison who gets away. Goodison leads it. In second place, it looks like Olsen. And Collins is moved through. Peter Collins is blasting away there. And Peterson's up the back at the moment. And it's getting very, very torrid down there. As Goodison, or is it Collins? It is Collins who's moved up. Collins has lost his helmet colour, but Peter Collins is going for his life. And Mary England, he's in front. And uh, really pulling away from the Danes. It's Collins in front. Olsen is in second place. In third place, it is still Gunderson. And Peterson's at the back. And this is good news for England because Peterson really needs to move up into second place. Peter Collins, if he stays there, and it does your heart good to see PC back in the reckoning. Over the, the into the last lap of the last lap signal, and Peter Collins is going to win it, and that will take him into a runoff with Andy Graham and Peterson making a last availing bid to get up into second place and Olsen's looking for him there and the Danes well who goes through it is Bo Peterson and again we can only conjecture about that last corner because well maybe we're speaking out of turn it looked like Olsen notably slowed let Peterson come through a second place will put him on six points and he's going to go in that runoff as well so right to the last the last gasp, we have got something to talk about. Well, all the speculation will be about these last two corners. Remember, Peterson must get up to second place to force his position in the runoff. Olsen clearly is looking for him. He's in second place. Gunderson knows his chance is gone. And, well, are the Danes team riding, or was that a fair piece of overtaking from Bo Peterson? They complained bitterly when the Americans did it, but that looked just as blatant an example to me. So we have got Peterson on the inside, Collins, grid two, Graham on the outside, the prize, the last place in the first ever Speedway final to be staged in the United States will be the 37th World Speedway final, Andy Graham it is, who is delaying the start. We saw Peter Collins win his last ride, that was all he had to do. Andy Graham, well, remarkable, he only had one point after two rides and only three points after four. 
and here he is in a runoff. That just shows how the fate and the fortunes can fluctuate here in World Championship Speedway. So who's it for me? Peterson on the inside, Collins grid two. Graham on the outside, the side so crucial, and it looks like Collins has gone away, and so too is Graham, it's certainly the two Englishmen, and it's Andy Graham who's up front, Peter Collins is second, Peterson is third, and Andy Graham, this 24-year-old from Birmingham, whose chances seem to have gone, is leading, but he's got Peter Collins, and Collins has moved through, there was a gap left there, and Peter Collins showing his experience of so long at the top, remember he was the 1976 World Speedway Championship, Winner I have moved through, and unless the English boys do something very silly, we're going to get four out of five through. So Collins in front, Graham second still pressing hard. No so Peterson is being dropped. He might think that just this after, the way he still the last point in his last ride. Collins was just a lap to go, remember his younger brother Les has won this title. It's going to be a night of celebration if PC can hold on for just three quarters of a lap. Andy Graham will make one desperate last effort, I know, to try and find the outside run. He might just have it, has he No. Peter Collins is going to hold on, going over the line. He's made it. Peter Collins it is for England going through to his eighth world final. England has got four of their five finalists through it. Andy Graham will go there as a reserve. So it's been a heartening night for England and a night of most enjoyable speedway. Well, here are the 11 qualifiers for the world final in Los Angeles. Les Collins, the winner, and Kenny Carter in second place. Then Dennis Segalos, who beat Hans Nielsen in the third place runoff. Two more Americans, defending champion Bruce Pennell, and Kelly Moran, who in fact comes from Los Angeles. Dave Jessup will be uh, hoping for better luck in this world final. Phil Crump goes through for Australia. Kai Nimi, the Finn. Jan Anderson, the Swede. Peter Collins, the fourth Briton, makes another bid for the world crown he won in 1976. And young Andy Graham goes as this.